This is what they call booty time around here. Well, I mean, almost. Straight up on Instagram right now. <laughs> no. Seven years? I feel like an old man right now. Seven years I've been talking about gadgets and tech with a focus on smartphones, and yet I've never seen the other side of it until now. I had the opportunity to visit the production facility for the OnePlus 6. I've never seen how these things are manufactured and I have a whole new appreciation for the process involved. I got to see everything from start to finish. It's not just a fabrication process, it's also a quality process. People are checking to make sure that the components are as expected and functioning properly. A lot of these tasks that people are doing are then being checked again immediately by the individual standing beside them. And this is necessary to make sure that you know, things don't slip through the cracks so that you don't end up with the device that's not functioning as soon as you turn it on. Now the thing about hardware is that hardware, it's hard. Where? Another thing that was a huge shock to me, or at least something that I should have known existed, but I didn't, was the number of machines involved in making sure that everything was going correctly. Pushing down various aspects, automated things for various tiny little solder points. The machines themselves, I'm sitting there thinking, who makes the machines that make the machines? We're always asking for innovation in smartphones. We wanna see a lot of changes. But one of the difficulties with that is quality. Getting quality with a particular format is hard and it takes time to make sure that everything comes together in a package that you would wanna pay for and you would feel good about owning over a long period of time. So asking for drastic changes is kind of unrealistic in a way. When I talk about having a new respect for these products, that's kind of what I'm saying. They have to put these systems in place. They have to implement these systems, train these people to make sure they're delivering quality first because nobody strictly wants an ambitious product that doesn't work or is DOA. They also had testing for durability. Uh, I witnessed a couple different drop tests that uh, concerned me greatly. Yo, did you? You see how far this thing dropped though? Yeah. I, I, you didn't see it. On the, on, the, on the face as well. Look, it's landing on this uh, granite or marble. 1.8, 1.8. Toggle it up, toggle it up. We'll go 1.8. It's gonna go all the way up there, right? Oh, yeah. We're testing our luck. I feel like we're testing our luck here. Oh, rack it up. Oh, oh, oh. It still looks pretty to me. The OnePlus 6 here is all glass. Glass on the back, glass on the front. I was nervous watching these things drop from various heights. It, it received no damage. But there's other tests that are really cool too, like a test that inserts a USB cable an enormous number of times. And then another test which puts strain on that port to make sure that it's not going to loosen or eventually disconnect itself. And these are the types of tests that are done thousands, if not tens of thousands of times. 28,000 times. That's how many times they drop it. They also had giant machines to expose this device to various weather conditions. The equivalent of being left on the dash of a car so they could elevate the temperature to what it might be like if you lived in, I don't know, Phoenix, Arizona, and you left your OnePlus 6 on your car dash. Would it damage it? Would it remain operational? And to what exact temperature? They did the same thing actually with moisture, even though they don't state that this device is IP rating for water resistance, it's actually more water resistant than you might think, and they do test for it. The camera was kind of funny because I jumped into one of the photos. 
They do various camera tests as well. There is a machine that they first insert the phone and subsequently the camera into to make sure that everything is sort of on axis. You can see these weird geometric patterns that they attempt to capture. The displays get tested and calibrated. They get put into this really dark box where it can be evaluated and they can run a color test on it to make sure that it's displaying images the way that it's intended. There's other far more technical things too, like when it comes to the communication aspect of the device, where they'll stick the device into a box, which aims to kind of restrict the transmission and reception of signals to make sure that it can still behave as they expect within that suboptimal environment. There are so many procedures in place, skilled people putting these things together. Hopefully through this video, you're able to gain a whole new respect for what goes into this, how many people are involved, and how hard it is to deliver a quality device to you. As a customer on your end now, you might look at your smartphone a little differently, especially after you've been using it for a while and it keeps holding up and it keeps doing what you want it to. It's because of people like this and processes like this that aim to deliver you quality. It's because of this constant nature of checking the work and making sure things are being done properly. It's this level of precision that puts quality in your pocket. I know I have a whole new respect for it. I hope you do too. A much appreciation to OnePlus for letting me behind the scenes to see how this stuff is made and ultimately letting you do the same through this video. So there it is, a OnePlus 6 like this. You just witnessed the birth process of a brand new smartphone, and I hope you enjoyed it.